Hello and welcome to Seven Days of Halloween. Hi everyone and welcome back to Seven Days of Halloween. Well, today is day four and we are digging into our ideology. As you can see, I have lots of items here that we're going to be playing with today, but specifically my focal is going to be the Shattered Glass. The Shattered Glass came out last year and it was a big success. And of course, I jumped on board and I bought one and I never used it. So I promised myself I was going to use it this year and on other projects as well. Um, so I'm definitely going to be stocking up on that. Isn't it funny how we uh, see something that we love and we buy it and then it just kind of sits in our craft stash? And that's something I'm hoping to change. All right, so what we're going to be making today is just some um, frames using our paper dolls. I want to be using that shattered glass and it's a good starter for a, uh, for a title page or a cover for a junk journal or you can even use it on a card. I also have some old die cut remnants that were in my uh, bag of Halloween goodies and I created this little coffin for a background. The coffin was really easy to make and perhaps I'll do that in a future video but um, as you can see it's pretty easy. It's just this matter of having a piece of cardstock and doing some cutting around it to create a little coffin. All right, so I'm also pulling from my sticker book, and this is an older sticker book, but I do have some of these sticker books in my shop if you wanna check them out. And I'm gonna use these skulls to go on the uh, gravestone. I'm also using a bigger skull to go on top of the casket as well, um, and you'll see what I'll be doing with these in just a minute. Now the shattered glass is a little bit oversized. It's about the size of an A2 card, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. That's the approximate size. And as you can see, it has two, uh, two holes in it, two shatters. Um, so you may not be able to use both of them and that's okay. One thing that I wanna say is that when you are using some of your ideology to get the effect that you look, you may not use the whole piece. You may cover pieces, you may cut off pieces, and that's okay. I know a lot of people struggle with that because if they have something, they don't want to necessarily cut off part of it. But if you don't need the whole thing, then I say, just use what you need. For this particular frame, I was able to fit both of those shattered uh, pieces into my frame. So I went ahead and uh, used both of them. But if it didn't fit, if it was something that just didn't work with my design, I would have no problem cutting it out. And then once I had my shattered glass uh, glued to my frame, I went ahead and I picked out some of my paper dolls from the Halloween collection. Now the paper dolls um, that I'm using, like I said, are from the Halloween collection, but you don't necessarily have to go to the Halloween collection. There are other great images that would work as well. I just really wanted mine to look more like uh, funeral directors and I thought these two characters kind of fit the bill. And then take it into consideration uh, the frame. I did uh, figure out the placement of my images. Now, as you can see, I am using a wet glue. I'm using three in one beacon, uh, which gives me movement. So once I place down my images, if they are not uh, exactly framed the way that I want them, I still have time to move them. If you're using pop-up uh, strips or if you're using um, double-sided tape, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult, in fact, probably impossible to have some movement after the fact. And I think that's probably why when I am working with ephemera, I tend to use my three-in-one beacon versus double-sided tape to make sure I do have that movement time to adjust any images that I feel need adjusting. And then with my glue completely dried uh, on my shattered glass, I went ahead and I got out my scissors and I am trimming off the excess. And this panel is gonna go directly over my paper dolls. 
as you're going to see in just a moment here. It will be a great starter for the cover of a junk journal. It could be used as a card. There's so many ways that you can use this um, and you can also continue to embellish it. Now the frame that I'm using is part of the ideology collection and I think it came out earlier this year and one of Tim's releases. Uh, but if you don't have these frames, these are really easy to make. You can easily just get some of your own cardstock or even some of the packaging from some of the ideology and you can create your own frames. The next piece I want to make here is uh, exactly what I did. I just used some of the uh, backing from my ideology package and I created my own frame. I just cut it down and then I found a die. I believe it was from one of Tim's, uh, the postal set, I believe I want to say, is what I put in the middle uh, to create the opening and it created a really nice frame. So ultimately I decided that I'm gonna use these in a mini uh, junk journal that I'm gonna make for Halloween. Uh, so I wanted to just create one more page and that's um, why I decided to uh, create another frame. Um, I'm gonna be using the file folders um, and I thought this would be great on one of the pages. So as you can see, I picked out a couple of children uh, from the uh, paper doll collection, uh, which is of course the Halloween collection that I've been talking about. And I just uh, am using the coffin as well as the tombstone uh, as my background. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the kids directly in front of that. So the idea around this theme journal is gonna be um, like a mortuary or a, uh, you know, a, a place where you go to buy your coffins, set up your funeral arrangements, um, something like that. So that was the idea of the journal. So that's kind of where the theme of these images are coming from. And then once you have everything in place, you can go ahead and cut off the excess. So for this particular one, I did want my tombstone and my coffin to be outside of the frame. It is a smaller frame, but it will fit perfectly on the page that I'm gonna be adding it to. So I'm not gonna be cutting that off because that's part of the design. But on the top frame, as you can see, I have part of the, uh, the woman's dress on the outside of the frame. So I'm gonna be trimming that off as well. Okay, so now that I have everything uh, trimmed, I'm gonna go ahead and add some of these little metal elements. And uh, what I love about these is the back of them are flat, so they're easy to glue down and add to your, um, to your projects or whatever you're making. So I just went ahead and opened this up, and as you can see, I've got three sizes here. I've got the small, the medium, and the large, and I'm going to be using the small ones for this. Um, and then what I'm gonna also do is I'm gonna pull out some of my foundry wax. Uh, the gold the gold color because I wanted it to match the lettering of the frame and I'm just gonna add some of this foundry wax to give my um, little metal elements some color. The foundry wax, if you've never used it before, is pretty easy to use. Um, typically if I have a bigger area that I'm coloring, I will just um, put it down on my media mat I'll get my paintbrush and then I'll start to add the color to my embellishment. But since these are so small, I decided to just kind of um, add the foundry wax directly over them and then just kind of use the paintbrush to make sure I've got full color. Um, and then what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and dry it because you're gonna get more of a vibrant color. Once you dry it, it'll tend to look more like the metal. Uh, uh, with the shiny coat, it will just have some color. If you were not to use your heating element and just leave it as it is, it is a little bit dull. So you definitely want to give it a nice heat uh, blast once you are finished. And then once they're completely dry, you can go ahead and just use your glue to add them to the corners of your frame. All right, so that's really it. These are pretty easy to make. Well, I did do kind of a simple process here, but I just wanted to show you these uh, shattered glass uh, items from Ideology and how you can use some of the frames with them. Um, I, like I said, I'm gonna be creating a little mini uh, junk journal with a more of a funeral home theme. Um, so I decided to go ahead and kind of show you my beginning process of that. So the uh, 
folders that I'm going to be using are also from the ideology collection. And those are those many file folders. And in the set, you get three folders. So that's what I'm going to be using. Um, and um, I also pulled just from some of my Halloween paper to create some of the backgrounds for my file folders. I will be decorating my uh, funeral home theme journal off camera. Um, and once I finish it, I will give you a walkthrough of it if I'm able to get it done before Halloween. Uh, but that's really it. This is uh, what I wanted to show you is just kind of an introduction to these shattered glasses and to show you basically how fun they are to use. And I'm definitely going to be using them in the future because I think they are great additions, especially for Halloween um, and to put them behind windows and whatnot. All right, so this was day four of our seven days of Halloween. And um, I will be back tomorrow with another video. Keep in mind, if there's any products here that you um, are looking to find, I will have them listed in my description box below. Um, so you can hopefully link to them and find the products easily. I do get a small percentage as an affiliate. So um, if you can use the links, I'd really appreciate it. And of course, it's no cost to you. All right, everybody, I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish off this video with some spooky music as I finish decorating the first part of my Halloween funeral theme journal. And we'll see you again tomorrow.